you hear the plane shaking and it's a lot go through your head. Screaming, crying, oh my God, this is it. I'm going to die. Turbulence is one of the number one reasons people don't want to fly. They're afraid of turbulence. It's definitely the worst turbulence that you would intentionally take an aircraft through. We've all been on that one frightening flight. Ooh. The seatbelt sign is off, and then all of a sudden, bump, 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 bump. Turbulence is that invisible threat to aircraft meteorologists are still trying to figure out. We tell the pilots how intense the turbulence is going to be. You can see that I thought turbulence was invisible. It most certainly is invisible, yeah. why, which is why it's so difficult for us to work on. Ah. Flying is still the safest way to get from point A to point B. But for some people, just the thought of getting on a plane like this can make their palms sweat. Psychologists say turbulence is the number one reason people are afraid to fly. I'm Dave Malkoff, and we're about to hit some rough air ahead. Ladies and gentlemen from the Weather Channel Explorers, rough air ahead. Several times we've been about ready to land and just about ready to touch down and pulled back up again because the winds changed direction. You just go like, oh, what's happening? I don't know what's happening. It's like speed bumps. Like yeah, speed bumps, air. really, yeah. yeah. Scary, scary. It can be. Millions of us feel it all over the world every day. That sudden drop, you grab your seat and imagine the worst. We crisscross this country on all kinds of planes going from airport to airport searching for answers. What is turbulence? Can it be prevented? And just how dangerous is all that bumping and bouncing around at 33,000 feet? While light turbulence will just slosh your drink around a little, there is more severe turbulence that can do some damage if you're not buckled in. But how can this happen if you're just flying through a clear, flowing stream of atmosphere? Weather Air 1234, Atlanta Tower, runway 27 left, line up and wait. Weather Air 1234, line up and wait. All right, let me explain exactly how turbulence works. Weather Air 1234, runway 27 left, cleared for takeoff. Weather Air 1234, cleared for takeoff, runway 27 left. Contact departure, good day. Departure, good day, Weather Air 1234. So when that stream of atmosphere we talked about is smooth, so is your flight. But the air up there isn't always built like smooth peanut butter. Sometimes it's quite chunky. Air can change direction, speed, the pressure can rise and fall. These changes all happen quickly. So what causes this? The atmosphere is stirred around by changes in air temperature. Fly from a pocket of cold air to a warmer patch, and chances are you will bounce around a bit. Mountain ranges way down there can cause trouble for passengers as well. Just like a canoe rolling over whitewater rapids, the fluid bumps and bounces over and around the rocks. Less rocks in the river, the less you get tossed around. The same thing happens right here in the sky, only the whitewater rapids are mostly invisible. So what do you think when you're coming towards the plane? Um, you know, just looking forward to getting the flight over with, honestly. <laughs> um, it's a little interesting that we're on this shuttle. It makes me think that we're gonna be on a little bitty plane. Some people are terrified of flying. Maybe you're one of those people. Is this what scares you? Find out soon enough. <laughs> Kristen Young is one of those fearful flyers. And we are about to see what it's like to fly with her through turbulence. It did get quite bumpy, three times actually. But first, Let's take you to the city where we met this Texas-born traveler, San Francisco. A three-hour, 48-minute white-knuckle flight to her parents' place in Dallas. Tell me about this fear. When did it start? How early do you remember having this fear of flying? I had an emergency landing back in, I think it was 2011. Taking off from Chicago O'Hare, heard three loud bangs. One of the engines had died, I later found out. 
The plane started teetering a bit. The woman next to me was like screaming, crying. I'm literally saying, oh my God, this is it. I'm one of those who's going to die. Everyone on board was safe, but these emergency landings are no joke. They are, however, extremely rare. Ever since then, I, I've just been terrified. By sheer strength of willpower, mind over matter, Kristen forces herself to fly. If she wants to see her family, she's got to go. Do you ever catch yourself looking at the engine when you get on? Um, I try not to, but now that you say it, I'm staring at it. It looks relatively solid. <laughs> when I step over the threshold from the jet bridge to the plane, I think I say like a little prayer, like, please be a safe flight or protect us. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're trying to close the aircraft door. We need everyone seated at this time. Um, I'm about to take off. All right, love you. Okay. I'm really close with my mom, and just hearing her is very calming for whatever reason, like just in case I never see you again. I don't say it, I don't say that, I don't say that, but that's my thought process. I hope and pray that that's not the case ever, but just in case, so. A little bit of a rough ride uh, up until the... I truly uh, the did not know what to expect, flying next to someone who's so afraid of planes. I do, however, know she's not alone. People are really scared of turbulence. They believe that they are plummeting hundreds of feet through the air. My name is Justine Tiedemann, and I'm a clinical psychologist, and I work with the Fear of Flying Clinic at SFO. SFO, San Francisco International Airport, has mental health professionals and pilots right there on the grounds teaching people how to overcome this fear. But Kristen has not taken the class yet. She is just throttling up, powering through. Shortness of breath, racing thoughts, and things like that. People are afraid of flying because they envision a horrific nightmare in the air, that they'll panic, freak out, and possibly not survive even if the plane successfully lands. We take off and fly along this route that will take us right over two turbulence-producing mountain ranges. The first one is right here in California, the Sierra Nevada, but we will eventually go over New Mexico, passing right over the southern edge of the Rocky Mountain Range. That's the fun thing about living in San Francisco. You always have to fly over the Rockies. Mountain wave turbulence is where winds blow over mountains and then actually they ripple upwards. These waves will amplify as you get up higher and higher in the atmosphere. They can, like an ocean wave, break. Here comes that first set of mountains. The anxiety is starting to well up. Even little tiny movements like that, like, make me nervous. The flight attendants are still moving around, so they look unfazed, which is good. <laughs> Sometimes people have gotten unwanted attention. Stewardesses will be concerned. That can be embarrassing. But people envision themselves running up and down the aisles, howling, throwing themselves on the ground, causing a big scene. Everybody on the plane's looking. But those things, at least in my experience, have not materialized. Yeah. It's 99 degrees in Dallas yeah. right now, and all that heat is just radiating up towards us. I haven't had a... Uh, a bumpier landing than this in a very long time. The heat on the ground and those two mountain ranges created a bit of a panic for Kristen. For her, this flight was the last straw. I've had enough. I really want to find a way to no longer be afraid of this. How did Kristen finally use science to overcome her fear of turbulence? How could this help millions of others? Thank you. Thank you. And later? There are certain situations where you will actually fly directly into the storm. This is something a commercial airliner would never do. We are bouncing and bumping around. Ladies and gentlemen, rough air ahead. Subsequent Tower, SkyWest 5312 on the FMS Bridge Visual 28 right. Is it going to be a rough ride or are we going to crash? Subsequent 312, clear land, 28 right. I, I've just been terrified. We're now crossing a zone of turbulence. Please return to your seats and keep your seatbelts fastened. Yeah, there's some big clouds coming up. We've been flying with Kristen Young. Kristen is one of those people who are terrified of this. Yeah, it feels like the plane is being pushed to the side and that really makes me nervous. 
These incidents are rare, but they are also, according to psychologists, the number one reason people are scared of planes. People like Kristen, who lives three states away from her parents in Texas. I've had enough. Like, I really want to find a way to no longer be afraid of this. Um, and so I started Googling, and I it just so happened that at my home airport, SFO, there was this fear flying clinic. So we avoid, again, avoid thunderstorms. Soon after our flight, Kristen found herself in this airport classroom, where they ease irrational fears with facts. The Fear of Flying Clinic is taught by pilots, flight crew, mechanics, and clinical psychologist, Dr. Justine Tiedemann. Something really interesting that we learned from the pilots at the Fear of Flying Clinic is that in the air, people aren't just flying willy-nilly. There's essentially roads. When one hits turbulence at a certain level, they report that, and they ask, is there a better level? You know, just ask around the other people that are on your highway. Those highways in the sky are strictly monitored from control rooms on the ground, like this one at the headquarters for Delta Airlines in Atlanta. Will you go ahead and um, sit the passengers down and contact the flight attendants, please? Ladies and gentlemen, due to rough air that we are expecting in the next 10 minutes, please return to your seats and check the security of your seat belts. In the next building, pilots train and retrain in multi-million dollar simulators. Inside, it's exactly like a Boeing 777 flight deck. Whoa. In a moment, we are going to push this button to experience three separate levels of turbulence. But first, what exactly is it that shakes a plane? The plane flew through some waves in the atmosphere. You can imagine them looking almost like ocean waves. The atmosphere is a fluid just like the ocean, and it waves just like the ocean. And those waves can sometimes break, just like the big crashing wave on the beach. If you happen to be flying in the atmosphere where one of these invisible waves is just rolling around, you will get a bump, 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 bump. But then if you fly through a wave that's actually breaking, like a big Hawaii 5 crash, bang, smash on the beach, you can't see it in the atmosphere. The pilot didn't see it, but all of a sudden you're flying and oh, you, you have these big ups and downs that make everybody go, oh. It's the pilot's responsibility to avoid those invisible waves. So you actually go around the plane and look at all this stuff. Absolutely. Delta's chief technical pilot, Tom Stegall, has a new weapon in the fight against bumpy flights, the airline-issued iPad. So I just changed from a radar display to a turbulence display. Wait, this is turbulence here? With this one screen, pilots are connected to every flight in front of them and behind them on that same highway in the sky. So if one pilot hits bumps, the data automatically shows up in the control room and inside the next plane behind. This is uh, Delta's flight weather viewer. We actually developed an in-house. There was a time when turbulence forecasts used to come in every 12 hours. Now, they're updated every 15 minutes. We tell the pilots how intense the turbulence is gonna be. The planes themselves read the air, the computer maps it out, and the entire system keeps every flight up to date. We issue what we call a turbulence plot, and it's basically just a line or a polygon, and our pilots and our dispatchers see it as soon as we issue it. And now you can see that there may be hazards out ahead of him that weren't reflected in the radar. It's also a 3D display. Look at the bottom of the screen. The pilot can choose not only to go around the turbulence, but if possible, up and over it. Yet there are some situations where pilots will take themselves right into some of the worst turbulence they can find. We are going along for the ride, and you will too, after this. Whoa! Ladies and gentlemen, please fasten your seatbelts. We're about to fly into a hurricane. Please secure your seatbelts. We're expecting some rough air ahead. We're anticipating some rough air in approximately 10 minutes. Here in the simulator is about the only place on Earth where you can actually dial in the type of turbulence you want to go through. But it's going to be so real, we're actually required to sit down and buckle up. Please return to your seats and check the security of your seat belts. To explore turbulence, Delta has allowed us into this 777 flight simulator that sits in a whole row of flight sims in this highly secure section of their Atlanta headquarters. Commercial pilots are constantly putting their skills to the test in places like this. The goal is to avoid turbulence altogether. 
The first one we're doing is light turbulence. Just bump it around a little bit. You can see we're starting to rock and roll. So this is what, moderate turbulence? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit more than, than uh, we had before. That was light turbulence. This is the second level, but it goes even one beyond that. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> now we can see it's starting to shake. The light is starting to bounce around like that. This is their third level of turbulence heavy turbulence now. One of the things that we can do to make it better is simply to get better at our turbulence forecasts around the world. They need to be ready for any kind of weather anywhere on the planet. Turbulence scares people because they feel like they're out of control, right? Well, here at the Delta Flight Museum, they offer an experience. That's so cool, 737. That can put passengers right into the pilot's chair. I'll tell you a thumb up or thumb down. That'll, that's what that is, yeah, okay. That's what I'm telling you to do. Okay. This $400 simulator ride is the only one of its kind in the nation. This is so cool. Just pick up a little speed. 70, 80, 100, 130, 140, rotate. Oh and wheels up. Oh, uh, this is harder than it looks. Now they're gonna switch seats here. Not only that, we're actually gonna turn on the motion outside to get the full experience. Ooh, here we go. Yes. It sure is harder than it looks, but atmospheric turbulence is a natural part of flying. Commercial pilots use these maps to avoid it. But as we found out, other pilots push right through it. Well, your pilot would always avoid flying into or around a storm because of all the turbulence that picks up. There are certain situations where you will actually fly directly into the storm. This is where we're going, Hurricane Florence. We flew there on an Air Force WC-130J into the eye before it made landfall in September 2018. The line that we're actually traveling is this white line here. Now, flying into hurricanes is still the most accurate way to measure their strength and track their movements. All right, hang on, everyone. But if you're looking for a relaxing, smooth flight, hang on to your butt, this ain't it. All right, here we go. We're about to go through some of the worst turbulence you could possibly go through. We're punching through the dirty side of Hurricane Florence. Throttle, there. throttle. It's definitely the worst turbulence that you would intentionally take an aircraft through. Jet stream turbulence can be pretty bad, but you know, we try to avoid that. This is something a commercial airliner would never do. We are inside the hurricane, inside the eye wall, at just about 10,000 feet off the surface. Whoa! A military plane, a commercial airliner, a cargo jet, they all hit turbulence, but only one of them is carrying hundreds of customers paying for comfort. Cargo planes that have no passengers are not interested at all in where the turbulence is. They just fly. It's not a safety issue. It is purely a passenger comfort issue. Flight attendants, please prepare for landing. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare for landing. Welcome back. Have you ever been on a bumpy flight? It happens when a plane flies through an invisible pocket of rapidly changing atmosphere. But what if passenger planes could avoid turbulence altogether? What if they could see the unseeable? Every second of every day, the airplanes are taking off or landing somewhere in these United States. What looks like your normal modern Boeing 777 cargo jet is much more than what it appears to be. Look a little closer, right next to the logo for JAXA, basically the Japanese version of NASA. Well, that's what makes this the aeroplane of the future. Aviation has come a long way. You're watching a Boeing demonstration flight. Working with JAXA, the aircraft manufacturer is testing a light detection and ranging or LIDAR system that can actually see clear air turbulence. For clear air turbulence, what's frustrating is that can happen over an ocean with no mountain and no warning. But that could be changing thanks to lasers that scan out from this port and sense air particles up to 10 miles away. They can detect if air is unsettled. Then an onboard computer alerts the pilot so they can avoid the turbulence or secure the cabin. The jet stream creates ripples that are a little bit bigger 
not a whole lot bigger than the size of airplanes. And so that's part of the problem is the airplane flies through something kind of the same size as it, and it really affects how the plane flies. Detecting turbulence is still tricky. Boeing has their system, Delta has their own, connecting planes together, giving the next pilot in line a digital heads up. It allows me to not only anticipate weather events or things that are going to happen better, but allows me to share that with our crew members and our passengers. I got me some Advil PM, and I'm going to try to sleep the whole way. Just a general sense of like, oh, I just want to get this over with. I just want to get this over with. And then knowing that I have to then turn around and come back two days later on another flight. And psychologists have found a way to pause those mental anxiety tapes that keep some people from flying. It's okay to be anxious. When you can accept that about yourself and then you can start to think about something else and not be so inward focused on the anxiety, it just goes away by itself. The next step is figuring out how a warmer planet will affect the bumpy skies. More turbulence and also more intense turbulence in the mid 21st century due to this warming of the tropics but cooling of the poles at high altitudes. Basically, there's more turbulence to come, but if your pilot has the right tech and you have the right mental tools, you'll always be clear to safely land. You may now use your mobile devices.